Um, we're going to talk about cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower because people really like to grow these and they usually grow them in the spring, but I'll tell you a trick. Um, it, they're actually taste better in the fall and people, and you're like, oh my God, it's going to be 105 today. I'm not thinking about my fall garden yet, but you should, especially if you are going to, um, oh, especially if you're going to do a fall garden because you know, right, it's too hot right now to garden. So on all these how to grows, I always have a couple of assumptions. Um, that you have a garden spot in mind and you have taken a soil test and adjusting the nutrients accordingly to the soil test. Um, as we talk about fertilizers and things, um, your base, you should be at baseline uh, before you start gardening. But um, cabbage and we're going to call these cold crops as a group, um, but they can go anywhere. Um, usually the fall cabbages are very pretty. You can get some really pretty purple ones. There's even ornamental cabbage that you can, that people plant out um, in their in their flower beds. So you could plant these in your flower beds, but this one happens to be a, a really well done uh, square foot garden. There, you can put one cabbage per square foot. Um, this is the traditional, I've planted all of my stuff in rows. So they can definitely go in the garden. Uh, one thing to note here that there is a good, um, can you help us see? There is a laser pointer, there we go. There's a drip irrigation. Uh, that will be important this year, especially, um, especially since your ground is probably hard as a rock if you've not been watering it. You can start these plants underneath other plants as they are put out in the garden. Um, this one has must have some um, critters that eat their cabbage and broccoli. So they've got a little net around them. So again, a raised bed that could be in the ground. You can definitely put them in containers if you have to grow on your balcony. That's the perfect way to do it. Um, this one looks like a, a fall decoration. You can eat with some herbs, um, looks like some thyme, some uh, sage back there, some chives. But yes, you could definitely put these in containers. Um, they do very well. You do have to water quite a bit as, as the heat is on, but um, as the as the winter as the winter approaches, you won't have to water quite as much. So usually when we plant our cold crops, it's you can plant them as early as March the 25th. Me personally, I don't have my garden ready at that time of year. I should, I don't. Um, but usually cabbage is on March 25th, and this is in central Kentucky. So if you're in the eastern part of the state or the western part of the state, um, if you're west of I-65, um, towards the tip of the Penny Royal area, you can move that um, back a week. So you could do maybe March 15th on cabbage. Um, and if you're in the Eastern part, you need to move that up another week. So you might be the first week of April. Um, the latest you can plant these, now these are transplants. These are not seeds. If you've got seeds, you need to back that number up or that week up about five to seven weeks. Um, but cabbage, July 15th, it's coming around the mountain. Uh, broccoli, you can plant that as late as August the 1st and Ju July 20th for cauliflower. Again, if you're in Eastern Kentucky, you move that back a week. If you're in um, Western Kentucky, you can move it up a week. Um, just some general dates for you because we're, we're kind of our, we kind of base that on our uh, frost date. And usually that's about the third week of October, which is about the 20th. But the cool thing about these plants is they tolerate frost. They even tolerate a little bit of freeze. Um, and they love the cooler weather, weather and they'll be sweeter after a frost. So if you're gonna start your transplants, you start your seeds about July 1. Usually they come up, it takes about five to seven weeks. Um, but look at this soil temperature. When you're germinating your cold crops, that soil temperature needs to be 80 degrees. You could plant these outside. You could direct sow your transplants. Um, it just takes four to six days to germination, and then they usually grow best at a 65 de degree day temperature, dropping that down about 10 degrees at night. I don't know if you're gonna you're gonna put your air conditioning down to 55 degrees, um, but uh, they'll do just fine. This is what the book says. Sometimes the plants don't read the books, um, but they do like this really high soil temperature to germinate. If you're doing them in a on a mat or something else, you want to turn your heat mat on. And as soon as they start poking through that soil, you need to turn that heat mat off and let the temperature, the soil temperature uh, drop a little bit for you. But usually we buy our transplants and you'll see the garden centers are starting to bring in their, um, their um, <clears throat> sorry, um, 
their cold crop transplants into um, into the garden center. So we're gonna we're gonna start with that. So you know you want a good healthy seedling. Um, this one has some good roots in it. It's not over rooted in the pot. It's not um, you know too tight. If it, I would probably pull off this little bottom here at the bottom and kind of if I had a big circling root system, I'd probably kind of tease that apart um, there. But then I would plant that in a hole and make sure that I just barely cover that little soil. Um, if you leave this, this potting mix exposed, it can dry out fairly quickly. Um, but this one looks like it's got some really good soil to, um, to plant in, so some heavily enriched organic matter soil. So um, kind of cover that just, a, just barely, water it in when you transplant that. Um, and they usually come in little cell packs of six or eight. Um, just remember, each of those will plant, are a plant and they will each produce a head of cabbage or broccoli or cauliflower. So um, usually when you pop it out of the thing, you do not wanna grab it by the stem. As you can see here, he's got it by the leaf petiole. It won't hurt the plant if you if it loses that leaf, if you pinch a little too hard, but if you grab it around the stem and pinch too hard, you killed your plant. So we always try to lift those up by a leaf or um, if we have a little spoon there, we can kind of pop them out and hit them with the spoon. Um, they do have biodegradable pots um, and then you can just set those in the ground and make sure that they're well watered for that. Spacing, these plants can get pretty big. So with broccoli, you want about, if you're in a traditional garden um, and you're doing planting in rows, you want about 14 to 18 inches between rows or in the row, sorry, and about 30 inches between. That will give you about a six inch um, walkway between your rows when the broccoli gets big. Um, but if you're in a square foot garden, you can just plant them on 18 inch centers. Um, that kind of helps out. So that's about a square and a half. Um, cabbage is a little, about the same, depending on the variety. If you've got a small cabbage, you can kind of tighten those up a little bit um, and uh, to about eight, nine inches to 18. It just depends on how big your cabbage is. Um, and the cauliflower is about the same as the broccoli. So um, you can kind of get that there. Um, <laughs> people are like, well, how much broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower do I need? Well, per hundred foot of row, so... If you're growing conventionally, a broccoli, you can get 100 pounds. That's a lot of broccoli. You can get 150 pounds of cabbage per 100 foot of row. My garden's not quite that long. Um, and I usually do some raised beds. So think about how many, how much to plant. And I'm going to kind of walk you through that. So if you, if you are a person, and hopefully you're a person, sorry. Um, if you like fresh broccoli, three to five plants per person. Um, that was probably over you know, a month and you need, if you want to, you can succession plant. So your broccoli doesn't all come in at one time. Um, if you're gonna preserve broccoli, either by freezing, um, you would need about double that. So you can kind of decide how much you want to plant. Um, fresh cabbage, um, three to four plants per person. And I would probably plant those every two weeks until the last planting date, um, because I can't eat four plants of, I can eat four heads of cabbage in a week. That's a lot. So if you preserve some of that, um, you double it. It's usually a double. And cauliflower doesn't last very long, but it, it will freeze fairly well. So if you like a lot of cauliflower to rice or to put on as pizza crust, um, uh, eight to 12 plants per person. I had, uh, they call it cauliflower wings. They were kind of roasted with uh, hot sauce on them. They were pretty good. Um, you do want to do some weed control. Um, this poor, this uh, poor cabbage patch has gotten a little bit uh, weedy. You can, and once you get your plants out there, you can put down a good mulch. And this is a commercial one, so they're probably spraying for their weeds. Um, but they let, they also let these flower. Um, anytime we have a vegetable garden, we do not want our weeds to flower because that just adds more seeds to our seed bed. Um, the weed control um, is very easy. You can hand pick. This one, I would probably hoe a little bit um, just to get some of those plants out of there. And then even if you've picked these plants by hand, taking them out of the garden um, will keep those seeds from dropping out and producing new weeds next year. So weed control is pretty easy. Um, in a smaller garden, hand picking is just fine. We don't wanna use any kind of sprays because we may spray our cabbage and cauliflower. 
but, um, and there are a ton of varieties. The thing I would tell you, especially for fall crops of cold crops, is that you want um, short windows. So you wouldn't want a 90 day cabbage, you would want like a 52 day cabbage because you're going into the fall season. But again, they're gonna tolerate that frost and freezing fairly easily. Um, just a hard freeze will kill them out. So if you have like a row cover, you can definitely um, cover those up. So we'll go through some um, recommended varieties and I'll show you at the end uh, some resources that we can use to find those. Um, so this is Pac-Man. This is one that you can find out there in the garden centers as transplants. This is a 45 to 55 day broccoli. So it's a short, it's a shorter season. It gets about 18 inches tall and wide. Um, it has, it's called large beaded because the individual florets or flowers are fairly large in the head or be, they call them beads. Um, it's a very mild flavor broccoli. Um, and it, it, the broccoli flower comes up above the leaves. So it's easy to harvest. Um, and it freezes pretty well for that one. So I recommend Pac-Man. It's a pretty good one. It's easy to grow. Um, this is a flat Dutch cabbage. This one gets to an eight pound head, which I think is a pretty big head, but it's an 80 day cabbage, probably something that you're not going to be able to, um, grow very, very well in the fall. Um, you can do it and it'll, it'll make some pretty good slaw. <laughs> um, it does get 24 inches wide. So this one's a 24 inch separating, um, in that row. And they have a little flat head. Sometimes you find some that have little pointy heads or round heads. Um, and this one stores well. Um, so if you have a, if you accidentally plant the whole seed pack, um, this one will store well, well into the winter. Um, this is Bonnie's hybrid. Um, it's a set five to seven pound head of cabbage. So it's not quite as big. It's a 75 day cabbage. So you're gonna get a, still a pretty big, you know, jump on the season. Um, it's well suited to our falls and springs. Um, it's resistant to fusarium yellows and is tolerant of black rot. So sometimes if you've got those diseases in your uh, soil, you definitely want to um, uh, kind of pick a variety that will be tolerant of those. Chinese cabbage. Have you thought about growing Chinese cabbage? It's a loose leaf cabbage. Um, so you usually um, pick off individual leaves. It makes a really good coleslaw. Um, and they're crinkly and they're light green in color. So they have a really thick midrib, which is this white part here, um, which you can eat by the way. So the head is 11 by five inches. It's a little tiny head. Um, so you, if you have small space and you still want some cabbage, this might be an option for you. Um, you can put it in stir fry, but it's a good, um, fall eating or sorry, fall growing. Uh, it has a very mild cabbage flavor. It's a 45 to 60 day cabbage. So it will head up um, very well. It does good in the, in the springtime because it's slow to bolt, but it'd also be very good um, in the fall garden. This one does tolerate some partial shade um, and it's resistant to fusarium yellows. No, not that we always get fusarium yellows. I do not have luck with cauliflower. I wish you all the best growing cauliflower. For me, it's just easier to buy it. Um, this is White Cloud. This one is a six inch head. It's, so it's not very big. It's probably a good two person split size. Um, it's a 75 day cabbage, or sorry, cauliflower. Um, and what you have to do with these is you have to, to kind of pull those um, inner leaves with a rubber band together to protect that, the curds on the cauliflower to keep them white. Um, it's um, just a way to kind of get those a little bit more bleachy. Now there are more varieties. There's purple cauliflower, there's orange cauliflower, um, but this one happens to be more resistant to cold than many of the other cauliflower varieties in, in, that you see on the market. So we've planted it, we need to water. We were gonna water it one inch of rain a week. Um, and separate, you should be watering right now because we are, definitely in a drought situation, but we really want to make sure we get irrigation during establishment as those uh, seedlings are starting to grow. And as the heads on all of these cold crops start to develop, we need to add a little bit um, there. I like overhead watering in the vegetable garden because I know how, uh, how much I need. The, I also like soaker hoses <laughs> in raised beds. So how do you get an inch of rain a week? 
don't use your great grandmother's favorite pie pan, um, but get an aluminum one and, and put a rock in it and either put it in the garden or stick it underneath your um, soaker hose, turn on the water and watch. And when that pie pan fills up, that's about an inch of rain. Um, so you can do that once a week. You can do that. Um, you can do half an inch twice a week. Um, you can even do, do an inch and a half. The plants are not that picky, but in times like this, when we're in a drought, um, it'll probably take us a couple of times to get that water back into the soil. So that's, that's kind of where you want to water. Now's a good time to water. Um, fertilization. Remember the caveat before that we had our soil test up to, up to snuff? So three weeks after transplanting, you're gonna add about five tablespoons of ammonium nitrate per 10 foot of row. So if you're talking about individual plants, you've got, oh, th this would be no math today. Um, if you've got um, 30 plants and 100 feet, so every 10 feet you got three plants. Oh, so you're doing about a tablespoon and a half of nitrogen per plant. Um, and then you wanna make sure you water that in um, so that it activates and gets into that root system. Um, but th these leafy green vegetables um, don't need a whole lot of nitrogen, but they need a little bit of kick after transplanting because that poor nitrogen doesn't stay in your soil very long. So we like our cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli. So do the insects. We'll go through a few of those um, and how to kind of take care of them. I'll, I'll give you some organic options or some things that may help. This is a little aphid. Um, he's sucking the juice out of our plant and he's got his tailpipes out here where that honeydew comes out. Um, mostly aphids you'll see in the cool seasons. So you'll see them in the spring and in the fall. And I like just to kind of wash them off with a spray of water. Um, they can climb back on, but they don't seem to be a very serious problem. Um, and if you can't get, if you've got, if you let them go a little bit and they get kind of populated, um, a little bit of insecticidal soap. Now, I'll kind of stay off my little high horse on my soapbox a little bit. Buy the insecticidal soap. Dawn dishwashing detergent, vinegar, and whatever else concoction you put on there can actually harm your plants more than the insects themselves because you can strip off that waxy layer and get some sunburn. Um, so we really want to make sure that we use insecticidal soap. It's basically dishpan hands for insects and it kind of breaks them open and dries them out. Um, it's a hard way to die, but they're aphids, they're okay. Um, but that's an organic alternative because that it's, it's a, it's basically a, a, like a bar soap. Don't use bar soap, <laughs> use insecticidal soap. So cabbage leapers, these little boogers are hard to see. They are the exact same color as your cabbage. So if you start seeing irregular holes in your, uh, leaves, look for these cabbage leapers. Um, the cabbage leapers are really, um, they're a, they're a butterfly. So if you see little white butterflies flying around, um, you won't have this as bad in the fall. That's why I like putting these on in the fall because um, uh, they um, tend to um, hardy have gone through their life cycle. They're past the, the caterpillar stage. Um, but BT will take care of these fairly easily. And if you've got good eyes, you can just hand pick them too. Cutworms, you might get a couple of cutworms if you're, this is, happens to be a corn plant, but they are also a caterpillar. Um, and they tend to bury themselves fairly close to the, they get so tired, they can't move off after eating through the stem of a plant. So if they eat through your stem and they leave, that's the trick, rabbits won't leave the top. Um, if they leave the top, then you know you've got cutworms and you can usually dig around in the swill and find them and um, feed them to the birds, it's easy. This is a diamondback moth. This is another cabbage looper type thing, but it, again, they're the same color. They're hard to see. If you start to see this window painting effect, um, kind of get out your get out your uh, binoculars. I'm sorry, your magnifiers. Look for these little cabbage moths, diamondback moths, and pick them off. There's one right there in the middle, or you can just spray them with a BT product. They do pretty well. Flea beetles we see a lot in the spring. We don't see them so much in the fall, but they're teeny tiny and they jump. Um, but they eat this, they kind of give you the shot hole effect. Um, you can try some botanically based pyrethrums or neems, but they only have fair control. The other problem is you're going to have, you know, you might need something more um, 
stronger than like seven to get rid of flea beetles. They do feed on cabbage. They mostly feed on uh, mine. I always plant a crop of uh, eggplant because they really love the eggplant and they leave my cabbage alone. And I don't care for eggplant. So harlequin bugs, <clears throat> we're seeing those right now. Again, they have the, the, they have the prettiest eggs I've ever seen um, as these little stripey dudes. Um, I've seen some larvae here in the last couple of weeks and this is what the adult looks like. Um, but they feed on our plants too. So we need to kind of control them. Um, you're gonna have to use a little bit um, tougher um, insecticide for those. Um, but that'll be in the resources at the end of the page, at the end of the talk. Here's our imported cabbage worm. Again, here's this little white butterfly we see all over. Here's the culprit that it comes from. Again, BT takes very good care of our uh, caterpillar friends. But if you like the butterflies, you know, that's kind of hard. It's a hard choice sometimes. There's root maggots. So if you see a plant that has collapsed, dig it up first and see what's going on. If it doesn't have any roots and you see these little dudes in the soil, <clears throat> um, then you have root maggots and you probably um, need to kind of take care of those. I don't see these a whole lot. I don't know if any of the other agents have seen root maggots on cabbage, um, but it's listed in our publication. So I wanted you to know what they look like. And sow bugs. If there's not enough organic matter around, these little roly polies um, <laughs> will, will feed on live tissue also. Um, but they like to, they really like to feed on um, dead and decaying plant material. So they're usually not a big problem for our cabbage and cauliflower. <sighs> Diseases. Now we got the bugs, we got the diseases. So here's black rot. Um, you can see black rot is a bacteria and it gives you these characteristic V-shaped lesions on the tips of the leaves. And they're usually in between the veins. And because it's a bacteria, we just need to pull out the plant and um, throw it away. We can use um, tolerant varieties, um, disease-free seed or transplant, and then rotate your broccoli with um, other crops, not um, the coal crops, rotate it with a, a tomato or a pepper or corn um, from year to year. <clears throat> and we have seed damping off. So if we've planted our plants in this, in, even in a container, they can dampen off. It's just a, a failure of the seed um, to grow. And there's usually some type of um, fungi or something at the soil surface that kills off the stem. You can buy uh, fungicide treated seed um, or transplants. Um, if you've got warmer soils, you can plant those pretty shallowly. Okay, that's all the diseases, there's not very many. So when we harvest, yay, we've, we've made it through the season, our plants are ready to harvest. We do wanna harvest broccoli when it's um, the flower buds open to show yellow. So this is about the perfect time to harvest our broccoli. I always kind of refer to what you can find in the grocery store. Um, so it wants to be a deep dark green. Um, you can leave a bunch of stem on there if you want. You leave the plant because if you cut your broccoli flower head off, sometimes you'll get little broccoli florets that come around out of the, the um, petioles and the nodes on those leaves. But this is a little too late to be picking your broccoli. Um, you've got open flowers. Um, it's great if you want to save some seed if you can on our heirloom varieties, but this, it's, this is not good eat <laughs> for broccoli. Um, and usually a sharp knife or um, a, a, a use a pruners to cut my broccoli off. Um, take it inside um, and wash it because you might have some little green critters um, before you um, freeze it or, or eat it fresh. So here's what I was talking about the broccoli. So they've cut the head off and you've got little side shoots. So you get little, you get smaller florets um, of broccoli, but that really does, sometimes it just tastes good too, if you just want to eat something in the garden. For cabbage, um, you want to make sure that it reaches an adequate size, um, depending on the variety and growing conditions. So sometimes you have to write that stuff down um, when you think it's about time to um, harvest your cabbage. Firm heads are preferred to soft heads, especially if you're going to put them into storage. Um, they could be left on the plant for about two weeks in the summer, but longer in the fall after they're ready to harvest. So cabbage, you can harvest over a longer period of time because they'll just continue to grow and grow um, until they bolt. If it gets too hot in the fall, they may bolt and that's not good eats either. Um, if you, again, if you cut your cabbage head off, you will probably get little tiny heads around the cut. 
as it comes into an, another production cycle. Yeah, even this one's got some uh, caterpillar damage on it. Here's cauliflower. Um, this one looks pretty good. It's not as tight as we see in the grocery store, but heck, I would eat that. Um, and they've probably pulled those leaves over and just rubber banded them over the top of the florets to keep them this nice, pretty white color. That's pretty good. Here's a, a Italian broccoli, or not broccoli, yeah, no, it's cauliflower, sorry. It's Italian cauliflower. Um, and this one has also had their leaves kind of pulled over the top and it's green, they're really pretty. Let's see, here's storage. Um, a lot of the storage we can do um, fresh, just in the freezer or in the refrigerator. We can put them in small um, bags, label them, uh, and then you can actually um, put those in the freezer just like that as serving sizes. Um, it can be stored in the, cabbage can be stored in the refrigerator for a month or two. Um, in late fall or winter, you can pull it up by the plant with the roots still attached. This is cabbage. Um, discard the low, loose outer leaves and check for possible insect problems. Um, and you can hang the, by the roots or wrap them in several sheets of newspaper tied on a string. Um, so we're gonna look at storing vegetables on page 29 when we get to our um, vegetable gardening guide. Um, curds will mature one to two weeks after tying. So this is for our cauliflower. And when they're peak maturity, um, coolly keep them in the refrigerator for several weeks. Um, you can do that also. And I think they're gonna roast these uh, cabbage heads. They look really, really good. So mostly we're gonna freeze. We're gonna make some slaw. We can store it by that, um, or we can eat it fresh however you want. So here's all those resources I was talking about. Um, I call this our vegetable garden Bible because it has everything you need to know about growing vegetables in Kentucky um, with the URL down at the bottom. And if you're looking for cultivars that have done a really good job in Kentucky, um, this vegetable cultivars um, publication, even though it's only, it's from 2013, it's almost 10 years old, it still has some really good um, suggestions in it. And if you can't find those varieties, try something else. Gardeners are experimenters. They're scientists. They're citizen scientists anyway, because um, what may work for me may not work for you, but that's a good place to start if you're a beginner gardener.